Cue the cheesy podcast music. <laughs> Welcome to Mega Fest, where we don't just manifest, we Mega Fest. I'm your host, Megs Malloy. I'm creating a community of silly and soulful working moms who are mostly happy, but know they're capable of more, more self-love, more self-esteem, more self-trust, more calm, joy, natural highs, more magic in the world, and more laughter. Each week, me and my guests will bring you tips and tricks on how to make the most of your one precious life. And we're gonna make them effective and efficient because ain't nobody got time for that. I believe in you. I want you to shine your light. I want you to become all that you're capable of. So let's hang out. Let's mega fest together. Yay! Thank you for being here today. I am so grateful for you. I just obviously cannot see you, but I feel you. I hope you feel my gratitude for you. Let me tell you this good news that we have at MegaFest. Although we lost the fart gun, fart gun has gone missing. I researched so hard for a new fart gun and I settled on one and it arrived and all right, I you know, I'm not going to taint this experience with my personal opinion, but I'm just going to let you hear what it what it has and we're going to let her rip and and you tell me if you like it, okay? Okay, that one wasn't so bad. <laughs> God, farts are so funny. Uh, but I think this this fart gun is a little too intrusive. The farts are just too long. You know what I mean? When somebody's trying to talk and they say the word of the day and then the fart just... Oh, that was a short one. The fart just keeps going and going. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to keep working on it. <laughs> So that brings me to the word of today, which is jovial. Jovial, of course, means cheerful and friendly, characterized by good humor and cheerfulness, hearty, joyous humor. And I would definitely say that MegaFest is a jovial journey, a jovial experience. I just hope that... Even if you are laughing because you're hearing a fart noise and it's so disgusting or uncomfortable or it just genuinely like tickles you, you're laughing and that's releasing great brain chemicals. You're smiling. You're way more likely to have a contagious smile and spread it all around. And here we are creating ripples of love. And that is what I am all about, creating ripples. Of love. You know, the word ripples just reminds me of this gay bar that was over by the beach in Long Beach, and it was so great. They had this drag queen brunch that was really fun. <laughs> drag queen anything is really fun, isn't it? Are you my people? Do you like drag queen anything? Anyway, speaking of things that make me think of fun, today's guest is my dear old friend from 20 years ago, Matthew Anderson. Back then, we used to call him Matt Anderson, but everybody evolves. When Matthew and I met 20 years ago, he was one of the founders of the Garage Theater, which is just a 30-seat, tiny theater in Long Beach. We were all recent college graduates back then, and he and his Cal State Long Beach buddies were starting this really cool thing all by themselves, and they were so young. And I was hosting a TV show on Charter Channel 3 called Toast Long Beach. You can see some of those segments at youtube.com slash Toast Long Beach. I'll put it in the notes. But I just adored the Garage Theater and actually became a su subscriber for them as well. And they were on Toast so many times. In fact, okay, funny side note. The episode that they were on, they came to the studio, and that day there was also an artist 
who painted Long Beach houses and just totally randomly, the artist had painted the house that a bunch of them lived in. Crazy. Don't you love those coincidences? <laughs> it's so crazy. So anyway, we did a lot of fun things together and I've just always enjoyed Matthew's you know, calm presence and always got a smile on his face and always supportive. And it's no wonder that he has evolved into what he is today, which is so many things. So he's first and foremost, he's a peace ambassador, aka a yoga teacher at Yoga Lucian in Long Beach, where they also are the creators of Yoga on the Bluff. So if you haven't gone to Yoga in the Bluff and you're anywhere in Southern California, you need to go check this out. It's such a cool SoCal, Long Beach, California kind of thing to do, to go do Yoga on the Bluff. He's also a meditation facilitator. He's a massage therapist and he's an embodied mindfulness coach. So that means that you don't just learn how to be mindful. You really like embody these things into your daily life. So, wow, he's a real spiritual kind of guy. He totally embodies that too. His program is called You're Already There which we talk about this in today's interview, and I absolutely love that you're already there. I'm trying to talk Matt into doing a workshop for for my peeps on you're already there, and he does one called Awaken the Awesome Within or so, something like that, and it's all about something that we talk about today, which is so important for working moms. We are so busy helping everybody else, we forget to identify what we want. Are you in that boat? Are you in that situation? Are you doing everything to serve everyone else and not really thinking about being in the driver's seat of your life? How do you want to feel? What kind of experiences do you want to have? What sorts of things do you want to bring into your life? And really, you will find that identifying what we want brings awareness to it. And awareness is the first key in change. What you are seeking is seeking you. It's already there for you. All we have to do is set our GPS, go in that direction, and the universe will bring us there. So let's start by awakening our inner awesome. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear it from the kind, sweet soul, Matthew Anderson. Oh, and I forgot to mention that we had recorded this episode last week, and I didn't charge my AirPods. And so... The audio from my computer was picked up on the microphone and it was just shit. It was echoey and completely unusable. We could not salvage it. And so we just had to do our interview again, but that's okay because it was a great opportunity for me to talk to Matthew again. Oh, Matthew Anderson. Hello again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You, listener today, are in for a treat because I came to Matthew with a problem and he was like magical Matthew right here. Oh my gosh. You've heard of Magic Mike, but this is Magical <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> and we'll get into that in a second. But okay, Matthew, what are you drinking today? I got the tea rocking and rolling. I did. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Hey, nice. I like the mug. Beautiful. Cheers. Here, this is a, this is a Yogi tea. It's called positive. I think it's called positivity. <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> it's really bomb. It's like some sort of yerba mate blend thing. It's like got some su- sharp citrus and stuff, but it's uh yeah, it's delicious. I have a coffee. Oh, that sounds I amazing. will go on record and just say that for everybody out there. I am totally addicted to coffee and I love the process of it. I like it's part of my whole morning routine and ritual is like making a French press, coming down and just getting that all set up. And then I'll go off and do my, you know, morning stuff, meditating, all that kind of journaling and stuff. And then the coffee's ready, you know, by the, somewhere in the midst of all that. And then I'm going to give myself like, anyways, I went through that French press already today and it's been so uh... good. I'm moving on to the tea, which is a nice uh, round two, keeping with that theme. Here we are. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the process of it? Do you know what I mean? I think, and that's what I'm coming mm-hmm. to learn that I like about a lot of things is the process of it. I think that's probably part of the reason I'm liking 
and stepping into this work that I'm doing now more fully is it because it is a process, you know what I mean? And so like, so you mentioned the work that you do now. So can hmm. you tell our friend who's listening about what kind of work do you do now? Last year I started my own business and it's called you're already there. It is a space in which I can help people or well, a space in which people can find me to help themselves get back their lives on a path that aligns with who they are and who that they know that they can be. And then those sort of like, um, and whatever that looks like for them is kind of what I can offer. I've been fortunate enough over the past few years to kind of build out and step into more holistic practices and like have more tools to sort of like help people find their way back to themselves. I've really just kind of been way into, again, the process of kind of like exploring what that all looks like and how that can feel like for different people. So different people need different tools at different times, different modalities to kind of explore and awaken those sort of dormant feelings that they've been having or have maybe have forgotten about for a long time. And so I'm, you know, oftentimes it involves like body work and massage therapy. Other times it's just like sitting and having a conversation. Oftentimes it's, you know, involving mindfulness and bringing that awareness to your body. Like we were kind of talking about earlier before we hit record and, or moving your body, finding, you know, prescribing different rituals and routines for people that aligns with them and that feels good for them. And um, consistency is a key step on this journey. So finding ways where it feels like they can incorporate this into a part of their life and it becomes less and less of like this thing that you do, like for example, like going to the gym or something like that. Like I, I, I don't go to the gym, but I've got nothing against it. Like I love that feeling of like, you know, sweating and just like getting your heart rate going and all of these things and just that sort of endorphins flowing through your body. You feel kind of like, you know, amazing after that. But this is something that becomes more of like who you are versus this thing that you go do. It sort of like brings that realization and that awareness back into yourself. And it's it sort of, it's coming from you versus this place that you go to, to do these things. Like, you know, practicing yoga, for example, like if you, you know what I mean, after a while, yoga, the practice of it, you realize and you begin to understand that it becomes so much more than stretching your body or move, you know, putting yourself in these positions to, and these, you know, it becomes a way in which and how you do what you do versus this thing that you go do. So yoga becomes kind of like who you are instead of this thing that you go to, you know what I mean? It goes, it looks a lot different in our lives because the skills we pick up in a class are beyond like being super flexible. Right. I mean, like, yeah, that comes with it, but like, it's a flexibility of your mental capacity as well. Like, you know what I mean? It, it, it opens up those channels so you can, you know, work through challenges and, you know, bring a little bit of compassion when shit gets hard and life gets a little thrill, some, you know, things in your path and you gotta find your way through them. And so they find different ways to do that. So that's a roundabout answer on how to, uh, <laughs> how I do what I do and what exactly it is, I suppose. But, yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's I love. Joy. I love this idea of you're already there. Mm -hmm. That that to me is is really kind of putting the power back in your own hands, in your own mind, in your own heart. And we talked about this last time, so it's a lot of a lot of layers to that actually. Like those feelings of you already being there are available to you now. Right. That's an element of it. Right. It's also like what you are seeking is seeking you. Mm -hmm. A little bit like that. Totally. And it's a little bit of the answers are within you, right? You you are capable of, you know, maybe with some guidance and, and some accountability, you know, figuring totally. these things out. Yeah. All of those things are very true. And all of these things are very possible, right? right? We just kind of forget them and we get so wrapped up into years of practice and habit. And we've developed these habits, you know, convincing ourselves that we, you know, we're doing all of these other things. And we've kind of forgotten that piece of ourselves, especially someone like myself and someone like you, and probably someone like who's listening to this right now or watching this right now, we have a tendency to put others so far ahead of ourselves, we sort of forget to take care of ourselves. And we forget how important it is to refill our cups and make sure that we're taken care of, you know, along the way. And so we eventually just run ourselves dry. We normalize this idea of feeling unworthy because we're just not accustomed to it. We've forgotten what that feels like and what, how we can do that. And so 
just kind of shifting that awareness, turning that lens back onto yourself a little bit. It's accessible to us all. And it, it, it's as simple as catching your breath occasionally, you know, starting there, getting out of your head. And like, you know, we play out scenarios in our head, just kind of face, trying to imagine what things will be like and look like things that aren't even real things that never have happened, things that never will happen. You know what I mean? And this is becomes <laughs> yeah, our reality, too. you know, yes. and we just start to believe that for no reason other than habit or things that ways that it's been in the past, kind of taking our control and who we are out of the equation as if that means nothing or as if we'd have no power and we're just sort of powerless to it. And then after, you know, a time doing that and sort of living your life, we have to realize that we've sort of been like as a metaphor, I suppose, like, in in the passenger seat of our life kind of just like watching it go by all of a sudden you feel like you're just kind of like seeing your whole life kind of going like what the hell what happened or like where am i like this isn't where i wanted to go and so finding ways in which we can get you back in that driver's seat right i mean so you have a little bit more of control over where you want to go and that it's aligned with who you are and in a way that feels right for who you are if that's yeah what you're yeah. Oh, yeah, completely. Oh, my gosh. You are, as per usual, you are speaking to my heart <laughs> and into my soul. <laughs> oh, man. Well, and yeah. it's so true. But, you know, working at a cemetery uh, and seeing people die, you know, after a, a beautiful long life or, you know, unexpectedly and <laughs> tragically sometimes. And it just really put it in my face. Like, yeah, are you in control of your life? Are you, in, or not control, but like, are you in the driver's seat, you know? And, and yeah. are you, are you being your own best friend too? Because totally. you're the only person you're ever going to live with forever. Yeah, right? <laughs> and we're so hard on ourselves, right? Like that is like yeah. the biggest thing. I think we can all relate to that in some way, shape or form. Like even the way, you know, yeah. yeah. Cemetery. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was intense, but it was uh -huh. such a good learning experience and to be able to help people on the hardest day of their life was just so rewarding. But you know, I mean, the work that you're doing is also helping people through these major emergency brake kind of situations where they're trying to drive their own car with their emergency brake on or they're trying to drive mm -hmm. in the passenger seat. So, so let's talk about what mm -hmm. kind of processes, because that's another thing you mentioned about the, mm -hmm. the coffee, right? The mm -hmm. process and it's all a process. And, and I remember going to a couple's therapist and he used to say that to us. It's like, well, it's, you have to process. And I'm like, <laughs> Kemp, come on, you know, it, it, fuck your process. Like I, right. I want to go from here to here and just get it over with. Why can't I just move from you know, depressed to happy. And I know I want to get there, but it is a process. So right. let's start with an example. So mm -hmm. I came to you this morning and you said, how are you doing? And I said, well, uh, I'm having a bit of a, a moment where my relationship is my biggest teacher and, and I'm mm -hmm. having some feelings that are kind of like stuck in my body. And sometimes our feelings do get stuck in our body. And I always say we need to, you know, em emo emotional metabolism. We need to metabolize them. So, yeah, so you really helped me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So let's let's go back to that mm -hmm. and just, you know, I say, you know, I say, what do I do, Matthew? <laughs> and then tell me what you told me. Oh gosh. So well, good. you know. Well, thank you. First, awareness is kind of like a key piece in all of this, right? In 12 step programs, any sort of thing that you're doing, right? is just like bringing that awareness to the situation, whatever that situation looks like. And that's why mindfulness is such a key component in the work that I do is because you get to practice awareness, being knowing and being with whatever's going on, stepping back a little bit from judging it as good or bad or whatever, you know, that is, and just kind of like, pivoting towards what it is, right? So as best as, as much as we can, just starting to recognize that feeling, like I'm feeling this way, or I'm feeling like stuck in my relationship or whatever it is at this time in this day. Right, um, because then, I have a tendency to want to get rid of it right away. Sure. But but that is a super important step in the process. Yeah, is, totally. Is identifying the feeling. And you asked me like, where is it in your body? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. just was like, like you said, you know, the monster under the bed. 
Yeah. It's like, you just shine a, let's, let's just shine a light on it. Yeah, right. These things become a little less scary once we start to, you know, see them for what they are. And they start to uh, release their grasp a little bit. These things that are clinging on to us, right? Or that we're clinging on to, depending on how you look at it, right? Like shame that we guilt, these emotions, these feelings, they thrive in darkness, right? And they don't, in the shadow, like they don't want to be seen or they, you know what I mean? Or we don't want them to be seen more accurately. You know what I mean? And so we bury them, right? And like, as one of my teachers calls it, issue, the issues in our tissues, right? These emotions, these thoughts <laughs> that we don't want to deal with right now, right? So we just like, oh my God, I'm just gonna fucking move on from that right now. And meanwhile, it's just like, you know, sinking into your skin quite literally. And then after a while, you know, after being buried for long enough, they start, they do want to be seen. They do need to be dealt with for you to move forward and for you to feel free, right? I mean, these things that we hold on to, you know, they hold on to us until we start to move through them and work through them. So bringing that again, shining that light on those things and bringing those awareness to those issues in our tissues, these traumas, these stories, right? These limiting beliefs that we've somehow developed over the course of our lives in some way, shape or form. And a lot of them have helped us, kept us safe, allowed us to get to this place and where we are today. So, I mean, they're not always bad. A lot of these things have helped us and protected us and kept us safe, you know what I mean? But also they may no longer be serving us. And that's part of what the journey is, right? Like the idea of where we want to go to looks different right now for you today than it did five years ago. You learn so much on the way to get to where you're going, right? I mean, it's, it's you know, you fuck around and you find out and you, you know, where you think you're headed might not be your destination. And you're like, oh shit, this is not exactly at all what I expected. And so like to have the, you know, faculties to sort of like be, recognize that this is not exactly right for this or this, you know what I mean? And so like, then you're able to get back on the path and, you know, chart a new course for yourself, you know, or whatever, but like, or maybe it's exactly where you need to be. And like those challenges that you meet along the way help you get stronger along the way, right? And you're able to let things go shed some skin and step into your power so you're able to climb that mountain within ourselves you know what i mean but it's it's it, it yeah. starts with you and it starts with that sort of belief and that awareness and sort of like helping people turn their self-doubt into power and strength and just knowing that you know it's it's possible it, it, and you know when you believe it is it is it really is there's there's nothing we can't do you know and um mindset is such a huge huge component in all of this you know they're all they're all big pieces we're all big pieces but nothing is beyond our reach it's all figure outable as dharma speaks to all the time and bringing that light into those places for people is so rewarding i couldn't be happier about the work that i do i mean i feel like i'm just beginning to scratch the surface on all of this too like it's so cool to yeah. uh begin to be there on a more consistent basis for people when you know what I mean? And so people are reaching out to me now um, and, you know, looking for this guidance, looking for this help. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm learning along the way too. Like, I don't have this figured out. Like I'm trying to like discover it along with you. And, you know, even though what we want is so similar and what we desire for our lives is so similar, it looks so different for each of us, you know, and how it feels for each of us, you know what I mean? But there are shared similar similarities and experiences that we have along the way. And one of the great, uh, I, I love like just kind of like pulling these sayings out of my mind and all these things that I've been finding over the years and stuff like that. But you being you helps yeah. other people be themselves. It's something that was yes. just a game changer for me. See, I always think, you know, I've always felt like I've, you know, like we talked about, like I'm a jovial person and I'm pretty much happy you know, most of the time and all these kinds of things. And before I was, <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> but you know, even still, like it's, it's true. And it's, that's not, that's not a lie. I am those things, but I'm a lot of other things too. And a lot of those other things, I don't show that side of myself very often. And even though they could be like running on loop in the back of my brain in between my ears, when I'm at a party or when I'm in some sort of social situation or whatever that case may be. And then I'll leave that thing and I'll be like, well, shit, that was, I just, blew that like that was not great I didn't really you know I didn't feel I wasn't myself I didn't feel really good in that situation and I wish I would have done this I could have done that why didn't I do that? and then you know that cycle kind of continues kind of like creating that fork in the road for people so they see that that is a thing 
that you went down yeah. this path and now maybe we've gone down that path in your life for 46 years or whatever it's been, or maybe, you know, you, you often take the other path, it, you know, wherever you go is fine, but like just being aware that that's where you are. And so like, if right. you don't like where you went, then you have an opportunity to change the trajectory of where you're going, right? Like, oh, okay. I didn't like that. And then, so that, again, that going back to that awareness piece, we're able to sort of find ways to sort of pivot towards where we want to be. Where, where you want. do want to go. That definitely is kind of part of the process. So awareness, and mm -hmm. then you have to know where you want to go, right? Like, I don't want to go this way. Totally. Maybe it's even, you know, ruling out where you don't want to go. I yeah. don't want to do this behavior anymore. I don't want to believe this story anymore. So kind of exploring thing that I, what you do. hundred. 100%. I think for me, and I think maybe if you're listening or even for you, Megs, like, I think, that, you know, one of the things that kind of changed that game is for me was to really become aware about where it is you want to go and what it is you're trying to create, what it is you want more of in your life. Not so much of what those things that you're missing or lacking, right? Like everybody kind of like oftentimes in these kind of situations, working with someone like me who's, or someone like a therapist or a, a life coach or whatever you want to call those people or whatever those titles are, right? We often like take our problems and put them on a platter and we offer them like to like, and here's what's wrong with me, like fix this. So instead of like, actually like, again, this is something outside of yourself that they were trying to like, you know, have somebody do something with this part of ourselves instead of like actually working on this part of ourselves and like reconnecting to those things that make you alive and make you feel, you know, vibrational and a being and the light and like focusing and shifting again, your awareness towards these things that you are and these things that you want to be and want more to, you know, things that you want to create more of in your life, opportunities, circumstances, relationships, you know, like bringing your attention and your awareness into those things instead of these things that you don't have. And, um, right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the word lack comes to mind. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. uh, lack mentality makes me less jovial. <laughs> what is up with this thing? It is really, this is not my favorite fart gun, I have to say, but. <laughs> I love multiple fart guns, though. I love that you have yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait to find the other one because then I'll have both. And I'll just be like, yeah. Man. <laughs> um, the only kind of gun that's acceptable. This is an awesome episode of MegaFest, but I'm just going to call a quick TO to tell you about the Soulgasm Society. My mission is to create a community of supportive and uplifting women who want to know how to make their one short precious life all the more joyful, add in some play and celebration, and learn the science behind how do you make your brain happy, all the techniques on how to calm your nervous system, and how to not fly off the mommy hamster wheel because you can't all stop working and you can't really get rid of your kids for more than two weeks. You gotta deal with it. And the best way to make your life happy is from the inside out. If you're not gonna do it for yourself, do it for your kids. They will see a difference. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And there is so much truth to that. So the Soulgasm Society is your answer. Come join us. You can click the link in the bio of my Instagram or the link in the show notes. I can't wait to have multiple simultaneous soulgasms with you. All right, now back to MegaFest. So then focusing on what I do want is kind of the, the next step. How do you help them figure out what they want. Working moms are just so, like you said, they're focused on other people. They are, they are taking care of other people. They're not thinking about what they want. They're totally. trying to meet everyone else's needs. Totally. So how do we help people identify what they do want? It's a good question. And it's something I think even like admitting that there are things that we want can be a challenge for people. You know what I mean? I know that yes. when I was first starting down this journey and this path, my teacher, Karina Nickerson, who I just adore, and uh, she's just been a huge uh, pillar of help for me in my life. And she would always kind of bring my, uh, the conversation or try to start the conversation where kind of like plant, you know, putting my path out there and talking about my path and what it looked like is where do I want to go from here? Like, what, 
what, what do I want to create more of in my life? And let me say this, I was uncomfortable asking for more. I was uncomfortable. Like I was like very content with my life. And that's, that wasn't wrong. I, that wasn't false. I was very content with the life that I had, but I didn't give myself the opportunity to really take a look at not necessarily like, oh, I want to be in this house or go to this place or do this thing, but like what that all feels like inside of you and like bringing that awareness again into like how you want to show up in the world and how it feels like to be to be free, to be connected, to be aligned, to be grounded, to be, you know, this fullest, most radiant self that you are. You, you know, that you know that you are turning the lens that direction and sort of like living out, you know, that sort of thing and, and seeing what that feels like. Restructuring your perspective in a way in that it's not these things outside of yourself that you're trying to uh, attain or amass or collect, right? But like aligning those things in a way in which that feels right for yourself and feels right for who you are and feels, you know, connected to that person that you know you are underneath. Mothers, I'm sure it certainly feels like it's everything that you do is provide for other people, right? And I mean, it's like, you know, even mouths to feed and this and that and do, you know, make, taking care of everyone else. And so often, as we were talking about earlier, you and your needs certainly go to the bottom of that list and go to the bottom of that pile. And so, but that's not to say that they, that they don't exist. You know what I mean? And we just kind of forget about them and we sort of like deprioritize them. We start to spend a little bit more time on what it feels like when everybody's needs are met. That where does that leave you then now? A key thing to keep in mind is something we talked about earlier too, was just that like, in order for you to take care of other people, you need to be able to fill from a full cup. You can't like help people on an empty cup. You can't do that. I mean, you're just going to like literally run yourself dry. Oh, it's so true. I mean, you know, even Oprah says that, so it must yeah. be true, but it is absolutely true that, yeah, you cannot, you have, when you have nothing to give, when you're running on empty, it's, right. it's going to be a bad situation for everyone, totally. for your children, for your partner, for... Yourself. And it may feel selfish, you know, part of the time to like, just, just think like, oh, I'm stepping back. I'm going to do this for myself when I've got so many other things to do and so many other people to take care of. It can oftentimes feel like selfish to do that for yourself. Like, who am I to give myself this time? Well, who the fuck are you not to do that? Like, you need to do that. Like, you have to do that. It's going to make yeah. other people elevated as well when you are elevated. Again, going back to that idea of like you being you to your most full will help other people do the same. You know what I mean? We all want yeah. Yeah. Or inspired by those people who live their life that way. And it, it's not selfish to take care of yourself. Self-care is not selfishness. Again, on that list of priorities, oftentimes we put that at the bottom because those are the kind of people that we are. And those are the kind of people that are the caregivers and the caretakers, right? We, we are, we're caring individuals and it's understanding that taking care of ourselves is as important as, as not more important. Like we have to start there in order for us to fully care for the people in the ways in which that we want them to care for us or vice versa or in how we show up in the world. You know, I was raised by a woman, a woman who does every single thing for everyone else. And there was hardly ever any self-care being made on her part. And <laughs> there's something to be said for that. Like there's something called a helper's high where mm -hmm. she just gets so much joy out of taking care of people and it is her purpose. But then you have like someone like my sister-in-law who is so excellent at self-care. Mm -hmm. Like that is one of her top priorities. And she does have some, you know, medical challenges that require her to prioritize herself. And, you know, but here I was coming from this place of just like watching what a woman was is somebody who just sacrifices herself for others. And then, you know, to see, um, we spent the whole pandemic together and, mm -hmm. uh, I became very good at self care because, um, I think, you know, I saw that and I listened to like the advice that you're saying here about, you know, you, you have, you cannot, I can no longer come from a place where my check engine light is on totally. and I'm trying to help my children totally. and raise my children that way. And, um, and like, even, you know, during the pandemic, I was supposed to be, uh, homeschooling my children, which I kind of did, but mm -hmm. Carter would, you know, and I would talk with another friend about it and she's like, Oh, you know, so she wants to talk homeschool techniques and Carter, my husband would just be like, Oh, talk to Megan about self-care techniques because, 
she's got that down. And nice. like that was sort of a dig on his part. Yeah, but like uh-huh. I'm like, yes. <laughs> hey, yay me. <laughs> yeah, so let me ask you a question then, Megs. So what do you think? Like, do you, why do you think, or how do you think? You said you sort of like sort of sort of connected to these practices a little bit more deeply and more regularly in the pandemic. Why do you think? What do you think changed in you, or how do you think those? became a priority for you? What do you think it was that shifted that in your mind or in your body? How did you sort of make that transition into making them more of a daily habit or practice or whatever you want to call them? Yeah, good question. Well, a lot of it was the external circumstances. So I had was laid off. So then I had a little bit extra time, but I was always with my children. So Mm -hmm. I could see how if I wasn't going to take a minute to get my mind right or my body right that the whole day would go to shit because like I, I set the tone, you know, uh-huh. it, it's um, like Katrina Wu, one of the guests on Megafest was saying that, you know, everybody thinks that like, oh, my kids are stressing me out, but it's like, it's you, it comes through you uh-huh. and, and it kind of starts with you. So um, you, d- you decide how you're going to handle that stress. Totally. And their totally. requests and their constant, mommy, mommy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, so so it was sort of like I, I had maybe a little bit more time in yeah. a way because I wasn't focusing. It, I wasn't on the mommy hamster wheel anymore. My story was like I was just working full time and they actually wanted me to work more than 40 hours a week. And I had a three-year-old and a one-year-old and I wasn't delegating and I wasn't creating boundaries and I was just kind of miserable, but not paying attention to what my Mm -hmm. intuition was telling me and not knowing how to change it. So, um, thank God in the pandemic when I was laid off that I got to just kick the mommy hamster wheel out the door and, you know, um, just solely focus on my children, which is, which is totally tough, you know, for like, Oh, to change your focus like that, where, you know, since I had children, I was working and then, and then all of a sudden be a stay at home mom. So it was, it was a hard learning curve, but I'm so grateful for that learning curve and, and self-care was definitely a part of that. And, and I, that's part of what I was talking to Carter about today where like, you know, I, I'm not going back to being burned out. Mm-hmm. Like I will forever from this, you know, from that day forward, I will set boundaries. I will delegate. I will right. prioritize self care. That's totally. because if, if the captain of the ship cannot drive the ship, we're not going mm-hmm. anywhere. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. And just in that story. So for example, so in that story that you're telling me about, you know, and telling all of us about how you sort of made that shift, you could easily have gone through your entire life on that hamster wheel and it would have been fine. Like, you know, up until that point, it was, it wasn't like you were mm-hmm. a miserable person. It wasn't like exactly you were a bad person. You know what I mean? But like, until you a- were able to actually have the time to realize and recognize again, bring that awareness to yourself and you s- sort of like saw that where you were suffering and how you were not living the life in which you wanted to live with, you know what I mean? Sometimes you don't even realize it. We get so wrapped up on that fucking hamster wheel of what we're doing. We don't even realize yeah. we're on one, you know right. what I mean? And so, and so it's like, yeah. yeah. So to have that opportunity and you know what I mean? It, to like be like, Oh shit. Whether, you know, however you get the time to realize that, you know, you need to give, yourself more you need to in order to give your kids more you know what i mean and you you know that's a gift you know what i mean and that's an opportunity and those are the moments that we want to try to find is when we can step out of our habits and our routines that we already have built for ourselves over past and really kind of really recognize what it could all again potentially look like when we do have the time like you know what i mean getting those obstacles out of the way right like we are the obstacles like, you know what I mean? Yeah. We set up these problems and we are the we are the reasons we make reasons and create stories why we can't do them or why we have to like do these other things first in order to, you know, once everything else is perfect, well, then I'll focus on doing this. But the reality is that, the, you know, the more you keep those at a bay or keep that separation between you, you know what I mean? It's going to stay separate. It's going to, it takes work to do the work. It takes a, a step into that to really, you know, make the changes. And so um, it does. Yeah. yeah. And it's sometimes uncomfortable to do the work. Oftentimes. 
<laughs> That's the deal, right? We you get know? very comfortable in it. My life up until that point as well was fine. You know what I mean? I, I was happy as, I, as far as I could tell. It was still out of balance. And I, I, I yeah. wasn't aware of how you know much I was missing that bringing that again bringing that joy and that into your life and that alignment into you know the way it feels when things are flowing like we talked about last time just dancing you know what i mean and the way it feels it's like that that sense of just freedom and being connected and not and surrendering to it all and just letting it go to let yourself feel free it's all flowing and connected i mean those are the ways in which you know that we can show up too you know what i mean it doesn't have to look like a struggle it doesn't have to be that and there's moments of challenge for sure challenge is good challenge makes us so stronger and it's not it's not a bad thing to be challenged but you know i mean it's it's important to not torture yourselves either you know at the same time so challenge. <laughs> When you have a moment, ask yourself, what do I want to create more of in my life? Mm -hmm. Not the external, but what are the feelings that you Mm -hmm. want to create in your life? And how do you want to show up? So it's, I I love those two questions right there. You really could get your answer just right there. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, So as a matter of fact, I wanted to share this with you too. Next Sunday, February 19th, I'm actually going to be hosting my first in-person workshop um, at Yoga Lucian Movement and Wellness. And we're going to be putting these questions kind of out there for people. So it's a free event. Um, Everybody's welcome. It's from one to six. My workshop's at three o'clock. It's a half an hour long. It's called Awaken to Your Inner Awesome. And we're sort of like creating that awareness around those feelings in, in, in within this workshop is like, you know what I mean? What it feels like when, you know, things are lined up, you know, all things on the, off the table, like, or on the table, however that saying goes, but like, you know what I mean? Like there's nothing that you can't do in this moment. What does it feel like when you wake up in the morning? What does it feel like? What do your relationships feel like? What does your work feel like? You know, how does that, how do you move and through groove through your day? You know, when, it's all aligned and when it when it's all oh my gosh okay so so proud of you for leading a workshop your very first 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 one one. first one one. yes yeah Yeah. everybody has their virginal experience that's Mm -hmm. great Mm -hmm. good for you and online version of it a couple years ago and now um yeah we're gonna do it we're gonna do it live and in person oh awesome which you know i know as you you're probably like me to be able to do it in person is just you know, you feel the energy in the room. You see people's expressions in real time. And it's just, that's Love really, it. um, you know, and you can see how jovial they feel afterward. <laughs> <laughs> what? This one's got to go. It's you're taking up, you're taking up too much attention. That's what it is. And it's called awaken to your awesome. Awaken to your inner awesome is what yeah. inner awesome. <laughs> Okay. And, uh, and you're going to be going over these sorts of things. Like, what do you, how do you want to yeah, feel in your life? Yeah, and... yeah I think so. <laughs> we'll see how it all yeah. goes out. Yeah. I think that's kind of like the, you know, that's kind of a first, the first step in all of this kind of work when it comes to bringing that awareness into your life, into your being as to how you want to be and how you want to show up is kind of like, how do you want to show up? And what does that feel like? The same way in which, you know, we were talking about with you and this feeling that was right here that just feels a little bit tight, right? Like that's not how you want to show up, right? And so just bringing that awareness to like what it would feel like if that was, you know, released or eased or calmed or soothed or whatever it is, you know what I mean? How does that feel for you? And then we can sort of create from that point uh, some sort of outline or program or whatever that looks like so you can practice being that way on a more regular and consistent basis. And so you have- Yeah, and- do that kind of thing. Hire Matthew Anderson as your embodied mindfulness coach and really kind of have some guidance and accountability through that process because as much as I want it to happen overnight, and sometimes these workshops are a good opportunity to kind of slow down, make Mm -hmm. space for asking these questions and allowing the answers to come. And that's a good starting point for your setting your GPS, but you know, actually implementing that into your life takes guidance. And so I know that, you know, you will be available to help people do that. 
Oh, totally. We all have the best intentions and like, you know, of course we all want those things, but life happens. And like we, it's, it's hard to stay committed to those things, especially when it's new and especially when we're trying something out and especially after years and years of like doing it differently and having other habits that we've implemented and have, you know, helped us in our life too. And so like change is hard and it, it, it takes support. And you know what I mean? We all need that support. You know what I mean? And especially when we're just starting, it's important to have someone in your corner to help you through that time. Not to, you know what I mean? It's, it's, yes, it's an accountability of a coach of some kind, you know what I mean? And it's also just to sort of like to, someone to check in with and to someone who's got your back until you are feeling supported enough that you can have your own back, you know, after a little while. So, I mean, it kind of, helps you like get, get gut move, you know, get moving on that path again. And, you know, getting the oil change and all those kinds of things, you know what I mean? It's just you know, having someone in your corner that really does support you to like, remember what that feels like. You are worth getting what you want because your ego is going to try and keep you down and keep you in place. Right. And then, you know, just, yeah, sticking with it. It's, that's so good that you're offering that Thanks. and that you're here for people. You know, yeah. you didn't take your own journey and leap of faith into this practice that is like people are waiting for you. People are just praying for the answer and you, your help is the answer. Oh my so, gosh. I know. I like hope this. that you, <laughs> yeah, I hope that you do that workshop online at some point too. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, this is the first in-person workshop that I've ever participated in or been a part of. And so I'm, I'm very excited about that, but 100%, I know that it's the beginning of the next chapter of like what this all looks like and just being, and being able to put myself out there for more people and reach a bigger audience. So thank you for having me here as well. So I can sort of introduce myself to, uh, to your people as well. And I'm happy to, you know, offer any sort of guidance or just, you know, any sort of anything that we can do. You have a conversation about what that could all look like and feel like for you too. Or, you know what I mean? Happy to help with any of that. So thank you for having me and opening up this portal for this. Thank you. And, and any other parting wisdom or things that you feel like, uh, we might've missed out and you oh want to leave with this special person who's with us today listening just starting is so important in my life and maybe you can relate to this too or maybe some of your listeners can relate to this too but again we just convince ourselves that we'll do that when everything else is perfect when everything else lines up and we're yes we'll take care of that when everything else is done but like Again, you're just going to find every single reason in the world. And I know that just because I've done that, and like for many, many years, mm -hmm. like start whatever that is, whatever that looks like for you. You know what I mean? If it's that thing that you want to do, if it's the instrument you want to learn or, you know, how to cook or whatever. Like, I think that was one of those amazing things, in, you know, about the pandemic was it gave everybody this opportunity you know, in spite of everything that happened, of course, but like it came everybody this opportunity, like yourself, even myself too, like to have this time all of a sudden to be with yourself and sort of recognize and remember what it is that you do want in your life and how that does feel like and how this could possibly be. And you know, the cemetery gig that you had again for a while too, like nobody knows how much time they have, you know what I mean? We're all going to find ourselves there sometime. And so it's taking care of yourself now is so clutch. It's so vital. It's so important. And so just starting whatever that is, it doesn't have to look like this. It can look like whatever it is that aligns for you. You know what I mean? But start going down that path. Like it's time. It's time. It's your time. Yes. You're worth it. You're and worth it. you're already there. You deserve <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah. You're already there. Totally. Yes. Aww. Well, Matthew Anderson, you are just a jovial delight. And um, I, <laughs> and the world is so much better because you're in it. And I just have always enjoyed you. And I'm so grateful for you sharing all of your great wisdom. And if nothing else, you today have made me feel better. And wow. that is is enough you know and anybody who is listening that's they're gonna feel better too so thank you go yeah. check out matthew anderson yeah please do he's such a kind sweet jovial guy wow i will tell you right now the best way to get in touch with matthew anderson is with his instagram 
and his handle is Mateo Loves You. Isn't that so sweet? Isn't Matthew so awesome? He is just such a nice guy and really embodies what he's teaching. For as long as I've known him, he is the mindful guy. He is the yogi. <laughs> he does, He just wants to serve. He wants everyone to have a better life. And I really feel that with him. I know that if he continues doing what he's doing, he will help so many people. Like we were talking about, if somebody is able to heal themselves and fill up their own cup, they will have more for everyone else. And that is a beautiful way to live. So make sure you look out for Matthew's next workshop, Awaken the Awesome Within. Follow him on Instagram. In the meantime, I really encourage you to find a quiet minute, even in the car or when you're folding laundry, because I know us busy moms, we don't have a lot of time. But if we can just take those in-between moments and for a second, just really focus on how do I want to show up? What do I want to create in my life? And not the external kind of what do I want to create? It's like, the feelings that you want to create in your life. What kind of habits do you want to have? Because your habits will create your life. Just even asking these questions and getting quiet, and you will allow your intuition to tell you the answers. And then reach out to Matthew or me, and we will be your accountability buddies. So I'm going to put a poll at the end of this episode to see if we like this fart gun or bring back the old fart gun I don't know, or get an get an entirely new fart gun. I think I think it's gonna have to be this other type of fart gun that I found on Amazon. Wow, I don't know. Remains to be seen. Thank you so much for listening. It is Meguary, of course. That means it's my birthday month. Just listening to this episode is a gift. I love you for that. If you want to take it a step further send it to a friend or five. If you want to take it even further, you could leave a five-star review or share it on your social media. There's so many ways to spread the love around in Meguary and spreading the love around is what Megafest is all about. So remember, don't just manifest, Megafest!